Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. As the sun sets here, I have finished draining all of the water from the exterior of our cylinder here surrounding the Ocean Monument. In fact, the only place where there should still be water inside of this entire circle is currently inside of the monument itself. Now that is not by design, that is not something that we're going to include in the design of the farm, we are going to be removing the water from inside the monument as we continue this project. But I just think it's always really cool to see the entire monument completely dried out before we start taking the entire structure down. And I thought I would jump back in at this point with half of the sand in this circle still left. Let me fly up into the air and show you that yes, we have one half of the monument completely exposed and the other half still covered by this grid of sand. But I'm not going to deprive you of the fun of watching some of the sand fall because it's one of the more satisfying things to do in Minecraft is to just get an entire wall of sand like this. And what we're going to do is using torches, just drop the sand columns directly on a torch where it will break. And doing this in a large area, large flat wall like this is always really satisfying to watch. So I'm going to load up a second account into this world we're just going to log in my camera account in spectator mode the guardians are still dying around the conduit that i set up here at the top of the monument but they'll probably be swimming around some of the other sides as well you might see the occasional fin pop out here and there but i'm going to set up a camera looking down at this so you can at least see some of the process of removing all of this sand and we'll come back to take a look at the entire monument revealed in all its glory in this dried out cylinder of the ocean Alright, so with all of that sand cleared out, we are back, and I want to go through some stuff with you folks. For a start, let's take a look in my ender chest, where all of that sand fits into about 11 shulker boxes. Well, about 10 and a half shulker boxes of sand, and that was half the monument, basically, dried out. So that was a lot of sand. Next, let's go into my statistics where we can take a look if we click on times used here in the items category. You can see that I have now placed 43,000 blocks of sand, which is fewer than I have mined because of course we were mining a lot of the sand here by breaking it on top of torch towers. But basically, I've had to place all of those blocks by hand. They were just shuffled into place by that system of pistons that I showed you in the previous episode. So that is how much sand it took to grid out this entire monument. I'm fairly certain I have not really placed a great deal of sand elsewhere in the world. I haven't been building with sand at any point, so I'm pretty certain that about that amount of sand was what helped us fill in this entire circle with that grid that we were able to dry out using the sponges. So that's a lot of sand. <laughs> that's a great deal of effort involved, and I think so far up to this point, this process has taken me maybe 12 hours to get it to the state where we're at now. And of course we're not done because we still need to drain the inside of the monument. A lot of the gaps in the sides there are stopped up with more sand and I do have a bunch of water underneath the monument still from the area where of course the legs still go down to the ocean floor. And as I mentioned previously, we don't have to worry about this being spawning space for guardians. As you can see, there aren't any down here. They're all captured inside the body of the monument itself, where I'm fairly certain right now at least they are being killed by the conduit that's still inside of here. And if we wanted to, I suppose, we could just end up with a laze collecting all of the Guardian drops and a system of conduits that are killing the Guardians as they spawn in these areas. <laughs> but I also want to turn this into a manual kill farm, both for the players looting effect, getting
giving you a few more of those prismarine crystals that are useful in making sea lanterns, and also so that we can get some XP from it, because guardians are actually a pretty decent source of XP as far as overworld mobs go. If I'm ranking mobs to kill for my top three experience farms, it'd probably be guardians in the overworld, zombie piglins in the nether, and then endermen in the end, because they're basically the only thing that spawns there. So I think that's probably a decent reason to have a guardian XP farm set up before we tackle anything resembling the other two farms. At this point, I have to head back over to the Mushroom Island where I've been mining out subsurface areas of stone so that I can get hold of a decent amount of cobblestone. That's where my beacon is still set up. And we're going to set up the beacon here because Haste 2 will actually allow us to mine out all of these prismarine blocks, or alternatively we could use haste one if we incorporate conduit power. But to have conduit power, I need to be actually in the water. But once we have that haste beacon here, we are simply going to be taking down the monument layer by layer. And it makes sense to do this from the top down. We're going to need to dry it out using sponges, and some of the rooms in here will be divided up enough that we can just throw a couple of dry sponges in there and soak up all of the water. But in some cases, we are going to need to use sand to divide up the larger rooms, and that's probably true of this top room here, which still contains the conduit that we set up earlier. But basically at this point we're going to be mining out all of the blocks of the monument from the top down until the only layer that is left is the base layer of regular prismarine. And the only other thing that's going to be present is the supporting pillars of prismarine brick below that. But that prismarine base is where we're going to be starting the construction of our guardian farm. I'm not going to be able to get to that today because I'm running out of time to make this video and we still have a whole lot of work to do. So I figured what we might do with today's episode is go out and raid a couple of other ocean monuments in the world. Partly to remind you that once you've cleared out an ocean monument of its Elder Guardians, you are free to do whatever you want with the blocks inside and so it makes sense to tear down a bunch of ocean monuments to get a bunch of prismarine blocks if you're not interested in setting up a guardian farm. Because like I said, already put 12 hours into this project, that's going to be a longer than average project for your Minecraft worlds, and chances are you might not be playing with a great deal of free time, so you might not have 12 hours to invest in a project this size. Fortunately, just clearing out the rooms inside these monuments is going to yield a great deal of usable blocks, especially if you're looking for dark prismarine. There are a bunch of rooms with dark prismarine lining the walls, so we can get hold of a lot of that by raiding other ocean monuments. And there are also a couple of fun ways that you can choose to raid an ocean monument if you want a little additional challenge. I can show you a couple of quick routes to get to the Elder Guardians and even a couple of ways that you can challenge yourself to explore one of these monuments without using the water breathing and night vision potions that you've seen me use in the previous ocean monument raiding episode. First of all, I'm going to head home and repair my elytra since that's a little low on durability from all the flying around I've had to do here. And we're going to seek out a couple of other ocean monuments so that we can dive right in. One of the most fun ways of taking on an ocean monument is by exploding your way inside. And we'll do that with a little bit of the sand that I've actually got left over in my ender chest from clearing out that other monument. We're going to craft up a bunch of TNT and I brought some blocks and some blocks of redstone with me in order to activate the TNT. So we're going to fly on down to one of the ocean monuments that I'm fairly certain was close to my mob farm. Yes, I see that one over here. And this is a neat way of getting around the fact that mining fatigue prevents you from mining anything inside the monument. Once you're within the radius, eventually you'll end up with that mining fatigue effect that the Elder Guardians give you. There we go, it happened right away. And so over here on each wing of the monument and over here at the top is where we can expect the Elder Guardians to spawn. So what we're going to do is throw down a bunch of blocks that we can place some TNT inside. We're going to put the TNT right there and we're going to place a block of redstone on top of the TNT which will light it and that should all now explode giving us an easy way to access this wing of the monument. And if we swim on down inside of here, we're inside this room with the pillar and the Elder Guardian, if not inside that room, should be right outside. In this case, it's generated kind of weird. I'm actually not sure where it is because it doesn't seem to be where it's supposed to be. This neighboring room has actually generated with a weird wall in here. So I'm wondering if maybe the generation of this monument got a little bit screwed up and the Elder Guardian isn't where it's meant to be. On the other hand, you might want to be a little bit wary of leaving an area like this exposed to the open water because if an Elder Guardian swims out through here, that can be very problematic fighting one in open water. Of course, controlling your breath is still gonna be a problem down here, so you will need to make sure that you return to the surface every now and again if you're not using water breathing potions, but we can try exploding the other side of the monument here, and that should let us into the other pillar room where the second Elder Guardian should be, and this one at least is right here, so we can at least 
try and take this guy on nice and quickly before our breath runs out. And there we go, we took him down, we got a free sponge out of that and the other guardian drops as well. And we can simply swim out of the hole that we blasted in this area and up towards the surface. Yeah, I really have no idea what happened to Elder Guardian number one over there in that wing, but the third one should always be at the top of the pyramid up here. So we're going to blow a hole in the ceiling, making sure that we can dive around some of these blocks, of course to break off the Guardian's line of sight. We've still got 1 minute and 30 of mining fatigue left, but we can place our last block of TNT there, make sure that my health is up because there are Guardians all over the place, and it looks like we should be in. Yes, and here is our other quarry. Here is the third Elder Guardian. We should be able to take him on, swim in to make sure we don't get as many Thorns effects, and there we go. We took him down no problem that time. Remember, if you've killed one of the Elder Guardians in the area, double check in case the Tied Armor Trim is floating around here. It can float to the top of the room where it might potentially phase into a block and look like it's disappeared. But for right now, we do still need to find the third Elder Guardian, the one that should be in this room. So I'll be on the lookout for any large tail fins and <laughs> I am very curious about what's happened to him. Maybe he swum up into here somehow? The mining fatigue effect has worn off. So in the interests of keeping myself breathing, I should be able to knock through a wall, get to the surface here and swim up. But the odd thing is I do not hear a third Elder Guardian's noises anywhere and it seems like a couple of magma blocks have generated inside the structure of this monument, including over here on this side. And as we just saw, that does damage the Guardians. So my, <laughs> my inclination is that maybe an Elder Guardian has swum around this pillar, got trapped on the magma blocks here and taken enough <coughs> lethal damage probably while I was building the mob farm, which is relatively close by, that it simply got killed before we made our way to this monument, because I've been around here for a few more minutes now and the mining fatigue effect has not refreshed. But there you go, that TNT blast was enough to loosen the blocks of the monument and allow you in, even though you had mining fatigue. Now, the one thing to bear in mind is that TNT explosions will not be as effective when they are underwater, exposed to water like this, they will not break any blocks. So the thing you've got to remember is to place the TNT in an area where it's going to be completely surrounded by solid blocks and there is no way for the water to get to it. Which is why we're using the redstone block here to light the TNT, since it's a power source for the TNT which is also a solid block and it won't let any water through to prevent the TNT from destroying blocks. So if you're looking for a quick and dirty way to raid an ocean monument, that is one way you can do it. Apply TNT around the outside target those points where you can expect to find the Elder Guardians spawning, and as long as you've got a respiration helmet, you should be able to take them out without needing a water breathing potion at all. For an even cheaper version of that, bring a bucket of milk with you and dispel the mining fatigue effect as soon as you get it. It should take about another 60 seconds or so to refresh, during which time you can knock holes in at the top of the monument and the two wings to either side, allowing you to swim down and take care of the Elder Guardians before the mining fatigue effect refreshes. Our next way is basically going to be the opposite of the TNT way. This is the Stealth Assassin route in. We're going to drink a potion of water breathing to give us enough time in there. We're also going to drink a potion of invisibility, and we're going to remove every part of our armor except for the boots that have Depth Strider. That's going to allow us a nice, easy way in here. I'm going to resettle on the monument so that I can swim, and now the Guardians should pay very little attention to me. They're actually only going to notice me if I get right up close to them. And there's our mining fatigue effect, but we're not going to have to worry too much about overlapping guardian lasers. We can even take off the elytra now that we're down here as well, and we'll be virtually invisible to guardians when we're up close. You can wear a single piece of equipment with an invisibility potion, and that's still going to render you basically undetectable by all the guardians in here. That now includes the elder guardian, so if we run up to this guy and take him down, he's not even going to fight back at this point, making it an absolute cinch to take care of any threats inside the monument. Oh, and there are sponge rooms in this one as well, which is great. I've actually got the opportunity to explore this time around. Let's see if we can find the way up to that last Elder Guardian. There's another sponge room there. That's fantastic. Oh, here is the one in the other wing. Once again, the invisibility potion is still in effect, so this Guardian's not even going to know I'm here. And he's down. Nice and easy to take care of. And there are some little kind of swimming spaces, crawl spaces of sorts up here in the ceiling, but it doesn't seem like there's a way up into the final chamber at the top of the pyramid. That looks like it's going to be up through here. Yep, there he is. Here is our final Elder Guardian. 
Let's take this one on before the invisibility potion wears off. And we've taken down all three of these guardians in less than three minutes. The mining fatigue effect hasn't even had particularly long to wear off. And now we should be able to mine out this monument as soon as it does. Just remember the only equipment you're allowed when you've drunk that invisibility potion is one piece of armor. And the objects in your hands are going to make no difference to that. The guardians will still not be able to see you. Even though I'm carrying a shield, I don't really need a shield in here because you can't block guardian laser effects anyway. But that is more or less the only thing you can wear. So boots with depth strider obviously make perfect sense for this since that's going to make you a lot more maneuverable than water and allow you to take on the monument that much more quickly. Still no tied armor trim for us unfortunately, but of course we also have the option of drinking a strength 2 potion if you want to make those Elder Guardian takedowns even faster. And once that mining fatigue effect has worn off, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we still have two and a half minutes of invisibility and water breathing left, and we're going to strip out some more of the desirable blocks from the monument. In this case, it's going to be Dark Prismarine and Sea Lanterns for me. I might want to put my helmet back on for this one though, since that's going to convey Aqua Affinity, which will help me mine the blocks down here a little bit faster. And the invisibility effect will still decrease the range at which Guardian can detect you even if you're wearing full armor. It's just going to be more possible for them to spot you in the meantime. And oh yeah, we should take out the sponge rooms while we're here as well. Feels a little bit ironic to me getting excited about these sponge rooms after I've dried out the main bulk of my ocean monuments. But hey, these could be useful for clearing out that interior. And it is sometimes possible for an ocean monument to generate without any sponge rooms in it whatsoever. So this could be a good set of tips for people to follow if you're still looking for the sponges you need to dry out your first monument and claim it as a guy guardian farm. But for now we've dug out through the side because my invisibility potion was about to wear off. I can re-equip the rest of my armor and elytra and we'll consider this another successful ocean monument raid. The final method we'll look at today doesn't require much preparation whatsoever. It requires absolutely no potions. In fact, it's kind of funnier if you don't use potions because the whole point is to raid the monument with a set of doors. And unfortunately for us, this is a method that only works on Java Edition, but doors have the unique property of creating an air pocket of two blocks tall so that the player can breathe inside of them. And this way, we can raid the entirety of an ocean monument without using any water breathing potions. Obviously, it's going to help to have a decent set of armor because the Guardians still hit pretty hard and Respiration is going to be really useful to have to help you explore the monument, but we can sneak up on this Elder Guardian, which doesn't seem to have any other Guardians around as backup. We can take him out like so, then simply retreat to our doors since they provide us with oxygen. Of course, you need to bring a decent amount of doors with you since with Mining Fatigue, you won't be able to mine any of these doors until you've cleared out the Elder Guardians or the Mining Fatigue effect wears off. But honestly, even without Respiration, if you brought about a stack of doors with you, you should have no real problems finding a space to breathe in amongst the chaos of the Ocean Monument. And in too high spaces, doors actually make a fairly effective defense against Guardian lasers since the Guardians won't really know how to react when you just stick a door down in front of them. Although in this case, the Elder Guardian seems to have escaped the pillar room and is probably around the corner here. Yeah, there he is. Well, I can just block myself into the corner here with doors and set up a little cell where I can open the door, rush out, attack the Elder Guardian and retreat to safety. This method is definitely a bit of a cheeky one, especially when you close the door right in a Guardian's face. And oh yes, we got the tight armor trim from one of those. Fantastic. I was hoping we'd pick up another one. This method sort of goes hand in hand with another method that I won't be able to demonstrate today because it requires a very specific set of blocks. Any blocks which can be broken instantly by default are kind of unaffected by the mining fatigue effect that the Elder Guardians inflict because they're broken instantly and nothing can really change that. There we go, that's the last Guardian down. But if any blocks can be broken instantly with your hands, those can be broken even when you have this full mining fatigue 3 effect, which normally reduces the mining speed of the player down to a mere fraction of what it normally is. People used to do this all the time with leaves and I believe shears, but I think since then a couple of changes have been made. Now that shears can be enchanted with efficiency, it's not possible to break the leaves instantly using shears in quite the same way. And having tested it a couple of times, the effect seems limited to blocks which you can break with your hands and not super efficient tools. So you can't use moss and an efficient hoe, for example. It just doesn't work that way. The most effective blocks you can use are slime blocks and honey blocks. Unfortunately for the players who used to use leaves, leaves can also now be waterlogged. And the whole point there is that you can fill up an area like this with with slime blocks or honey blocks, create an air pocket for yourself and just pop up into it, allowing yourself to breathe. If you need to wall yourself off from guardians, you can throw down a bunch of slime blocks in front of them, and then you don't have to worry about getting stuck in a corner with mining fatigue, unable to find your way out. That's another reason doors excel for this activity, because you can simply open and close them by interacting. And even though your arm moves really slowly, it's not going to stop 
you from opening a door instantly. Either way, I think I've proven my point with this one. The mining fatigue still has a couple of minutes to wear off, but I don't think I need anything else from this monument because I've already spent a bunch of time in between clips taking down the last bits of the ocean monuments that we are dismantling to make a guardian farm. And let's head back over there now to check on the progress. If you're playing along in this world, it might interest you to know that all of the ocean monuments we visited today are all part of the same ocean. There are five or six of them just in this one stretch of ocean, which is honestly on its own pretty impressive. But right now I'm going to place my bed down on the seafloor. A bed is another thing that you can actually get a decent air pocket in, although it has to be nighttime for you to be able to recover your oxygen in there. And now I kind of have to leave my bed here because I have mining fatigue for the next 50 seconds. And as we approach in the morning, it almost looks as though some kind of rendering issue has taken place and the structure of the monument has not loaded in, but the structure of the monument is now completely gone. I spent two and a half hours on a live stream with a beacon taking the entire thing down. We occasionally had to partition off a few rooms with sand and obviously as you get further and further in and you've dried out more and more rooms of the monument the guardians will cluster up in the only areas remaining to them that they can spawn but fortunately the invisibility potion trick that i showed off in this episode works a treat and as long as you're able to glide around with death strider you can make short work of dividing up the rooms of the monument and turning them into completely dried out areas and from there the beacon will allow you to haste mine all of the prismarine blocks which i placed in shelker boxes some of which are in my ender chest some of which are already back at the base. I'll probably spend a little bit more time getting rid of all of the water from underneath the monument so that we can get rid of all of these sand barriers and just let the entire thing breathe a little bit. And then in the next episode, we should be able to come back and design a guardian farm in this area. But we have this entire prismarine platform to work with. And interestingly enough, I'm not sure if this is something that will be really obvious to most players, but prismarine has this animated texture to it where it will slowly change color. If you take a look at it right now, it's roughly the color of the prismarine brick blocks around it, but as you stare at the prismarine, it will actually slowly start to darken and become a sort of bluish purple. This takes a little while, so it's the kind of thing that you're not going to notice unless somebody points it out to you or you see the effect sped up. But it actually darkens into more of a green color, and then it goes from there into a bluish transition. It's really quite fun to look at. And honestly, you don't often get to see the full effect of this while you're floating around inside the monument completely immersed in water, especially when you have to deal with all of the guardians around you. But for now, at least with this whole thing dried out, we can observe the effect of the prismarine changing before we wrap up today's episode. Look at it now, completely different color to all of the prismarine bricks around it. Isn't that fascinating? Well, folks, we are not done with this monument quite yet, but that's where we're going to leave this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed taking an extra look at ocean monuments with me, and trust me, this Guardian farm we're going to build in the next episode is going to be a treat. It's going to give us loads of XP, loads of prismarine drops, and basically supplies for sea lanterns for the foreseeable future. Well, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixelriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.